The moon landing was 100% staged, and Stanley Kubrick, director of The Shining, is the one who filmed it. That's what other people have been saying. God, not me. I'm just filling you all in. I'm Sam, and this is Conspiracy Central. Some people believe that Stanley Kubrick left Easter eggs concerning his involvement in the moon landing all throughout the famous movie, The Shining, featuring Jack Nicholson. For example, in The Shining, the young boy named Danny wears a shirt that says Apollo 11 USA as he walks down the hallway towards the room. Now, if that wasn't weird enough, the room number evidently was changed from the original number, which was 217 in the book, to 237 specifically for the movie. Little suspicious. Many people believe the switch was made to represent the 237,000 miles that exist between Earth and the moon. At one point in the movie, there's also a box next to Jack Nicholson that reads 39,000 yet another suspected Easter egg planted by Kubrick that was theorized to represent the launch pad that the spacecraft took off from at Kennedy Space Center in 1969 from launch pad 39A. One more crazy coincidence was the cans of Tang hidden in the background of the very same shot. Tang was the real life drink that astronauts would drink on space flights. Was Kubrick secretly trying to tell us something? Or was he just trolling people because he knew he could. Well, let's dive in and find out. You know what's interesting? Hoax theories actually started well before the actual moon landing itself. I mean, immediately as the first capsules were in orbit, many began to dismiss the images as fake news and the testimony of the astronauts just calling them nothing but lies. But why would the US need to fake the moon landing? It seems to not make any sense. John F. Kennedy promised to send a man to the moon within the decade, and though we were years behind the Soviets in rocketry, we were years ahead in filmmaking. So if we couldn't beat them to the moon, we could at least make it look like we had. Fake it till we make it, I guess. <laughs> Most of the theories originated with someone who was named William Casing. He'd worked as a technical writer for Rocketdyne, which was a company that made engines. William Casing later self-published a book titled We Never Went to the Moon. Casing left Rocketdyne in 1963, but remained obsessed with the space program and its goals, which was often expressed as an item on the a Cold War to-do list or something. Just go to the moon, check it off the list. Sending a man to the moon would mean the dawn of a completely new era. Casing believed it was completely unattainable and beyond the reach of any existing technology. At least the US had not been able to attain this kind of technology up until this point is what he believed. He supposedly also said that the chance of a successful landing on the moon was calculated to be 0.017%, which is one in 6,000. He cited his experience at Rocketdyne as the reason the public should trust his opinion. Throughout every single released update, he was just trying to figure out how it had been staged. Casing had a pretty popular theory that the astronauts had been removed from the ship moments before takeoff, right? And they got flown to Nevada where after, I don't know, a couple days later, they just broadcasted the moon, the moonwalk from the desert. There were some witnesses who claimed to have seen Neil Armstrong walking through a hotel lobby during this time with a girl on each arm. Another witness said that they saw Buzz Aldrin playing the slots. Casing believes from Nevada, they were flown to Hawaii and put back inside the capsule after the splashdown, but before the cameras had arrived. This theory was turned into Capricorn One, which was the infamous space conspiracy movie starring none other than O.J. Simpson. For those who don't know, Capricorn One was released in 1978. It was a movie about a reporter that discovers a supposed fake Mars expedition, as well as the unraveling of a government-led conspiracy involving the crew as well. In the movie, the capsule burns up on re-entry, leaving NASA with no other choice. They must the astronaut. <laughs> O.J. Simpson escapes and runs all the way through the desert and shows up to his own funeral, which is what? Yeah. <laughs> Was this another hidden message trying to alert the public of a real life parallel? Which real life parallels, you may ask? Well, the fire in the movie could be talking about the real life fire that tore through the rehearsal capsule during preparations for Apollo 1, which three astronauts, rest in peace, Gus Grissom, Edward White II, 
and Roger Chafee. There was some speculation that they were not on accident, but on purpose as a cover-up or a way to silence men who were about to go public about the moon landing hoax that would have been well underway at this point. Any other time in history, these theories would have been immediately dismissed, but America was having a tin hat epidemic, if you will, during the 70s, and for good reason, I suppose. The space program began in an era where it was fun to dream and see the future, have visions and everything, but as soon as this era ended, a new one was born, one full of pure cynicism. We were just coming off the Watergate scandal and then the lies told by America during the Vietnam War. The American people were just vulnerable and skeptical of any new information being fed to them through the US government. So with all of these theories out there, it's time to circle back to the one that has held the most weight. This one has withstood the test of time and it's all because it answers the real question. Who the heck would be able to stage a damn moon landing in 1969? Well, Stanley Kubrick had just released 2001 A Space Odyssey in 1968, a year before the actual space landing. Stanley Kubrick, along with science fiction master Arthur C. Clarke, created the movie. Kubrick also enlisted astronomical artists and aerospace engineers to help him with making the movie, which, you know, helped them make it look as real as possible. The man-made satellite, GPS, the smartphone, the space station, he predicted all of it and just built it for the movie. One of the most notable moments from the film was the scene that was set on the actual moon. It was shot completely in a studio and at times it looked even more real than the actual moon landing. There was no CGI or computer created effects, none of that. It was an entire like space station and it actually turned. And there was like a, a lunar surface that was covered with rocks as well. This was a revolutionary moment in cinema. So. To conspiracy theorists, it made perfect sense that NASA would go with Kubrick to help them stage a moon landing once they realized it wasn't possible to do it themselves. Yeah, the GOAT staging moon landings out here. Why would Kubrick agree to help them stage a moon landing, though? Would he believe that he was helping this country stay ahead of other countries? Could this have been done in response to a possible bribe of some sort? Or was this done with some sort of self-seeking intention to show how great of a filmmaker he was? So, if he actually did help stage the moon landing, why would he then feel the need to put Easter eggs all throughout The Shining, hoping to tell us of what he did? Maybe he felt guilty, I don't know, like, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, maybe he felt guilty and was trying to lay the foundation for conspiracy theorists to uncover the truth. There are so many possible reasons why Kubrick could have felt it necessary to tell us what he'd done. Hoax advocate Ralph Rene pointed out how every single Apollo mission before number 11 was plagued with about 20,000 defects apiece. With the exception of Apollo 13, NASA claims there wasn't even one single major technical problem on any of their moon missions. Even if this information was true, there's a humongous difference between a simple defect and a major technical problem. Early Apollo flights were test missions designed specifically to weed out any bugs in their hardware and in their procedures, so of course there would be defects. They were planning for them. They were expecting them. It wasn't something that just caught them by surprise. There are other theories out there that the moon landing was a hoax because one, the American flag looks like it was flapping in the wind, and then two, because you can't see the stars. Three, the moon landing is fake because the shadows aren't right, and then four, the moon landing is fake because you can't see Armstrong's camera. The list goes on and on. I found a great quote online from Rick Feinberg, the press officer for the American Astronomical Society who holds a PhD in astronomy. He puts things into perspective pretty perfectly. The quote reads, about 400,000 scientists, engineers, technicians, mechanics, electricians worked on the Apollo program. If in fact the main motivation for believing in the moon hoax is that you don't trust the government, you don't trust our leaders, you don't trust authority, how can you feel that 400,000 people would keep their mouths shut for 50 years? It's just implausible. I'm Sam, and this is Conspiracy Central.